Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. My biggest challenge is, I always say to myself, don't get nervous, and I'm always nervous. And my biggest challenge is going to be, I have to, they told me so to So that means you there. can't boo, no matter what he boo. says. Right. You can't. He's like really so depressed. With that. Um, I'd like to ask, if I ask for a show of hands, of how many of you know somebody that's caring with somebody with memory issues, or you, or you yourself is caring for somebody with memory issues, how many people would raise their hand? Okay. All right. Um, what do you notice about what's happening to your friends or yourself that's caring with somebody with, a mem with memory issues, dementias, Alzheimer's? What things do you notice about that person happening to that person? What things have you noticed? Who's caring, who's caring for oh. a loved one? What things do you notice about that person? A lot of stress. A lot of stress. Yeah. So here is our mission. Dr. Zeisel founded HeartZones, and our approach is I'm still here. And our approach is about hope. Our approach is about our mission is to create a life worth living every single day as this disease progresses. So research shows that successful treatment uh, for dementia, our symptom is, is a coordinated approach. So what that means is we use both pharmacological and non-pharmacological approaches in combination. We first employ the non-pharmacological approaches to reduce the symptoms. Second, we, are appropriate, uh, we use appropriate uses of medication. An example, Norman was a gentleman who came to us, um, was getting very aggressive at home. Um, Norman was an artist. When he came to us, he was getting very anxious in the afternoon, sundowning. Where's my family? What's going on? What we developed was a visitor's book for Norman. And these are things you can do at home. We had, we've been teaching what we do in the community. We just had a packed, wonderful packed house at the Callahan Senior Center. We're going to be at Sudbury about taking what we do and how you do them at home, how you develop routines, how you do care. So what the family Together, we developed, every time somebody would come visit Norman, we would take a picture. We would put it in the book. And then the family would write, Dad, it's me, your son, Peter. I had a wonderful time with you. We talked about ABC. As time went on, Norman went, was able to go out. When he goes out, when they come back, there's a picture with Dad. We went out to the restaurant. We watched the Wimbledon tennis match. I love you and can't wait to see you again. Not a date, but can't wait to see you again. So that's a non-pharmacological approach versus going, we, we try to use, we have organizations from around the country, around the world that come to us to learn what we do. We try to use the least amount of medications possible all the time. Why? Because we want to have, we know the parts of the brain that the dementia doesn't impact, the emotional parts and the procedural learning part, we want to have access to that as much as we can. So Dr. Zeisel talks about um, the four A's of, uh, of dementia, of memory issues, of Alzheimer's. Apathy, aggression, compatible behaviors, agitation, and anxiety. And what we talk about, if you are focused on meaningful and purposeful things during your day, evening, you're wandering at night in our community, that those symptoms lessen. And this is what we know. The four A's. I should have punched that twice. So our mission, as I said, is to present a hopeful message that we want you and your loved ones to have hope and we want to experience where you can go back to being a wife, where your kids can go back to being sons and daughters, where you can come in and participate and be involved in our programming. As we know, there are 100 billion neurons in the average healthy brain's autopsy of the brain. People with Alzheimer's, that the brain weighs 40%. The good news, there are 60 billion neurons left. We focus on the 60 billion neurons left. And I'm going to move through this quickly. Um, and the way we do that, we know how people learn. 
So if we have, to, we have to create a whole environment based on the parts of the brain that are not impacted. People learn for a ways, declaratively, I know the name of Boston is the capital of Massachusetts, episodic, you know, what I had last week for, for breakfast, but um, emotional memory, the birth of a child, your wedding, and procedural memory. The emotional and procedural is still there. That's what we focus on. Um, engagement, engagement, that's the antidote. Engagement, engagement, we invite. Every day I hear, Josephine, would you mind helping me? I'm hearing that all the time from our staff. Um, we have a whole research division, and I'll just give you an example. We create programs. Hearthstone has a whole research division. We have hundreds of different topics from all levels. So you might see ancient mysteries. You notice the font is bigger. And here's the key, and then there's questions. So we want our, your loved ones who are living with us to do anything, we want them to have memorable um, experiences, and we want them, we serve them. So you notice from every stage, we'll have reading groups where there's questions in here. The focus is not to finish this, the focus is to generate questions, conversation, emotional engagement. It might be later stage where we're having a category sort. I'm, I might say, Josephine, I'm using you again. I might say, Josephine, I need to pick out a gift for my wife. Would you help me? And I'll have a group of people. And I'll have pictures of gifts. I might have roses. And I might have a, um, an elephant. I might, and would you say with this? And we'll have fun. So that is what we do. That is who we are. We are honored uh, to be able to serve the loved ones that, that we are able to serve, uh, and we appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to uh, speak here. If there's ever any questions, or if you're interested in the, the workshop we're doing at the uh, Sudbury Senior Center, I'm not sure, you have my card, just email me. Thank, Thank you, you Arthur. You. Uh, Eric asked me if he could go on actually earlier in the presentation than normal, because he's, he's, got, he's got to go back to his day job because he's meeting some folks back at the, uh, um, back in Marlboro, yeah. am I right? Thank yeah. Um, but this is really an amazing, theirs is an amazing program, um, and, they've, and, and one of the reasons is that it's really research-based, but it's all based on this notion, once again, common among memory care units, right, that folks can, some, that folks can still learn, that there are some activities that you don't forget, right, and that the key is to be having folks that are around you that are accenting that, not accenting the cognitive losses. For instance, I had this wonderful woman who talked to me the other day, and I was doing, we're doing, I'm doing some work with her, uh, and she said, I just get so frustrated. She says, I went to the nursing home the other day, because her husband's in the nursing home now, and he, and he, said, and he said, oh, meet Sarah, she's my nurse. She, I, she, no, she, meet Sarah, she's my wife. She helps me every day. Right? And the woman was like, I was so depressed. But once again, from kind of learning from people like Eric, I said, that's not what your husband's saying. What your husband is saying is, my wife is wonderful. She took care of me every day. That's what this woman is doing. She's like my wife, you know? Well, you know, that's the kind of thing that you need to learn. If you're, if you're in an assisted living in a memory care unit, that all of the people who are dealing with your loved ones are people who have learned that and are trying to understand it better and better. If you want to stay at home instead, and I'm going to run through those few, and, 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 but if you want to stay at home, then you need to be trying to do something very similar. You need to be trying to learn and have your family members and others who are dealing with your loved one regularly learn many of these same things. Now, one place that you can go to to find a lot of that. Whoops, I'm, I'm just going to run through those. Those, those are all, we talked earlier about the, is the Alzheimer's Association. The Alzheimer's Association can help train folks that are around you and you yourself to help you deal with the person that you have who has dementia. Then you can find programs to help you support that by working with BayPath. How many, raise your hand, how many people know what BayPath Elder Services is? Raise your hand. Oh, only a few. Bay Path Elder Services, the state is divided into uh, regions. And in those regions, all the federal and state money that comes into, these, into Massachusetts is funneled through these regions to folks, to elders. Uh, and Bay Path Elder Services in this region is the, the, the spigot 
They're the ones who decide who gets what. Among other things, they're the ones that decide um, whether you are eligible for mass health, whether, you, whether your loved one is eligible to go to a nursing home, and also whether with, with home care, he could stay at home or she could stay at home. In this case, whether Mary could stay at home with enough home care. And if, there, and if she can, then Baypath is going to be willing to pay for that home care. As much of the home care, um, really, as Baypath says that you need in order to stay at home. Now, uh, and that's, the program, that's a program called the Frail Elder Waiver Program. There's a second program parallel to that, which is called the Personal Care Attendant Program. I'm not going to go into detail into those. These are all kind of presentations in themselves. But I want to, but, but, and, and Baypath provides a variety of other support services at home. But I want to talk about briefly, as this relates to Frank and Mary, as this relates to Frank and Mary. So if Mary is at the level where she would otherwise be eligible for a nursing home because she needs assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living, remember we went through those, right? She cannot, and if Baypath says that, and Baypath says that she needs 30 hours of home care a week, right, in order to stay at home, um, then Mass Health will pay for those 30 hours a week as long as Mary is financially eligible. To be financially eligible, Mary can only have $2,000 in countable assets, just like the other program, the nursing home program. But in this program, Frank can have unlimited assets. So all Mary has to do to qualify for this program is shift all of her assets to Frank and the next day she qualifies. There is an income, there is an income limit above which she has to pay a copay, but that income limit is $2,164 a month. Don't ask me where these numbers come from. They come from the sky, but that's the number, $2,164 a month. But only her income is counted and she only makes $750 a month. By the way, if Frank needed the program, he'd be over that income number, which means he'd have to pay a copay. But except for that copay, MassHealth will pay for a lot of the remaining services, right? So my, my bottom line is if you want to stay at home and if the home is still otherwise safe enough for you to stay at home, you can stay at home, right? Now also, Frank and Mary have other assets. And remember Frank and Mary's goal? They want to die and be buried in the backyard. They're willing to spend their assets to die and be buried in the backyard, which means they've got an additional $500,000. That's not nothing, right? If they needed it to pay for nursing home care, it would be nothing, because that's $150,000 a year. But to stay home or to supplement the care that Mass Health would pay, they've got a lot of money. In addition, they own a house. Now, I never tell clients, never tell clients to think about reverse mortgages for their house, except here except here. If Frank and Mary are 80 years old and their goal is to die and be buried in the backyard, they've got enough assets when combined with the, the mass health programs to do that, to, to, to supplement because they've got $30,000 a year worth of income, right? They can get a lot of home care paid for by mass health and they've got $800,000 to supplement all of that. Well, not all $800,000. At their age, if they applied for a reverse mortgage, they would get about, about $150,000 in value out of their house for the reverse mortgage. But that's a lot of money. So they can stay home. So the question then is, what about, and, and so that's what you'd have to do. They'd shift their assets to Frank. Once again, Frank would want to then change his will to say, if I die, I want everything in trust for the benefit of my wife, Mary, so that if he dies, and if it's possible, because the Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. are helping take care of my, et cetera, Ma can stay at home. Um, but the question then is, so what do you think about home care? Oh, all these strangers coming into my house, right? Mary's not gonna like that. I'm not gonna like that. How does all of that work? So like with memory care units, there are a lot of home care agencies, but I wanted you to hear from one of the best ones, right? I shouldn't, that's not an ad. I wanted you to hear from a home care agency that we worked with a lot and we think they're good. So that they, she can talk to you, Melissa Plood, just to talk to you a little bit about how theirs works, the kinds of services that you could get, right? And how you should shop around if you're looking for a home care agency. Melissa. Thanks so much, Art. Thanks everybody for coming today. I appreciate it. Let me just grab it from you. Oh, sorry. Um, so 